Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Got about 80 degrees this afternoon. Beautiful day, got some clouds building up. Supposed to get some precipitation in the next few days, which is much needed. Very dry, and I'm up in the Bungaloha. And before I get a little deck laid out here, I've got to get these solar cables coming in underneath and up into this corner right here because I'm putting in a little charging station. So I'm just laying out all the, the pieces for this particular station that I'm going to build today, and I think I've got everything ready to go. I've got these two batteries tied in parallel, going to start off with 200 amp hour little power station in here in the workshop. I've got my charge controller. I've got some cables. I've got a solar isolator switch, a couple of bus bars, and this QWERC battery monitor shunt that I really like, and you guys have seen that I use these in several other systems. And then just for right now, an old pure sine wave inverter uh, that works well, but it'll be fine for out here in the shop for now. Probably upgrade that in the near future. I'm going to mount everything up here on this board, and I'm leaving it open on the top to run the solar panel cables in there to start with. So I'm going to get to screwing this up and show you what it looks like. I think I've got everything. Okay, it's a couple days later, and uh, I got this done on the first day when I first started showing you guys what I was putting together and the pieces I've got, and I've got all the pieces up and running. It looks to be a bit of a hot mess right there, but it's functional, uh, very secure, and working well. So to start with, I've got these two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries tied in parallel for a 200 amp hour bank. And I've got some extra length cable here is a two foot run, and then here, is a two foot run too. I need that extra amount of cable for some of the larger batteries that I'll be displaying and testing in this space here. So I'm gonna leave uh, that length off the batteries. And then here you can see I've got some extra wire, uh, especially coming off for the battery side. You know, this is a little long. I'm leaving it long because uh, this is going to get changed here shortly. I'm going to turn this into, uh, I guess I'll call it a blue corner because I am going to tie up some more Victron products here. But until those arrive, I need uh, the power up here to be working good. So I'm leaving my lengths longer and I'm just having to uh, move them around in a way that I wouldn't normally. I would normally cut these shorter for nice clean looking short runs. But because I'm not exactly sure how the rest of my components that are coming will tie up, I've kept the wire length that I've got right now. So like you can see, even this extra two foot, you know, that's a lot of extra cable laying right there tied into the shunt. But because everything is going to get reconfigured uh, here in a little while, I'm keeping the extra wire that I've got in case... Uh, this starts to get spread out a little bit more, but, and I'm using this pure sine wave inverter here, uh, and these just have this simple, you know, crank that on there with a pair of pliers. I don't like that type of a thing. I'd rather have a nice bolt on there. And the one that I'm going to get to replace this is going to be like that. So anyway, everything's up and running and looking really, really good. It's working Got a 100 amp fuse off the inverter here. And the last thing that I need to do is go ahead and bring in my solar extension cables, solar panel extension cables into that solar isolator switch right there. And then I can be charging. But I've got, I've got this set up to what it was. These were fully, ba uh, fully charged batteries. So I programmed uh, the shunt to tell it it was a 200 amp hour bank. And in the past couple of days, I've only drawn down, you know, 14% of that. So, coming together, looking pretty good. Got lights. Got power all throughout the Bungaloha here. 
Yeah, I'm not happy with the way that looks, but like I said, until I get my more permanent installation, I'm going to leave those wires the way they are uh, because this will probably get spread out a little bit. And I may need the length, so I'm not going to cut until I absolutely have to. And coming off the, the battery bank negative, you know, I've just put a little loop in that two foot cable and then that goes to the battery negative side of the shunt. And then I've got a little one foot jumper coming to the P negative side up to the negative bus bar. This right here is the battery negative side off the Victron charge controller. And of course, uh, this is the PV array, positive and negative. Very simple installation there. And then you've got your, this red is a battery negative, or battery positive, excuse me, to the positive bus bar. And there's where I stuck in a little 100 amp fuse off of the inverter. So, that's all I'm going to need for right now to make this just work very well for in here. But I'm really excited to get the new products. I'm going to stick a Victron uh, inverter in here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the Victron shunt. I've been very happy with this uh, Q-Work shunt that I've been using for years out here on all of my systems. But uh, just for the purposes up here, I'm going to make it all Victron because I am loving the Victron as you all know and I'm going to just try and make it all Victron so I'm going to go into the you know a Victron shunt and a Victron inverter and that'll give me some uh, extra things to work with so yeah it's pretty good I'm happy with it it just looks like a mess but I'll clean that up so out here is where I'm going to run in the solar panel cables. And I think I'm going to go ahead. This is going to be covered with a deck out here, about a four foot uh, walkway coming off uh, the front of the bungalow. And I've gone back and forth about whether I just come up here and just above the floor inside, use a path pass through uh, and then run the cables up to the charge or to the uh, isolator switch. <laughs> Sorry, got tongue tied. Um, so I thought about maybe just slipping it up under there, going up underneath the floor or going through the wall. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and drop it through the floor and then just run it up on the inside of the wall. And that way I don't even have to, you know, have the pass through gland up in here. I just don't want to be looking at that and I'd just soon have it tucked underneath the floor. So I guess what I'll do right now is just drill a hole and run it up there and then it'll just take me a minute and I'll have solar coming right back into that battery bank. But yeah, that's kind of the idea. I have kind of waffled back and forth about that. I don't really want to see a pass through through the wall. And I really didn't want to drill through the floor either, but that'll be easy enough. I can drill a hole through there, get the cables up in there and seal that off, keep the, the bugs out. <laughs> well, maybe until I decide where it's going to be permanently mounted uh, with the other things, I'll just leave it as a couple of quick disconnects with MC4 jumpers into that isolator switch. That should work. Okay, so now I'm charging the battery bank. And although it's dark and a little rainy right now, lots of dark clouds, only 48 watts coming in off of a 400 watt uh, portable foldable array. That's that NERS-V that I'm still working out. But I will say just a minute ago, and if you saw my previous review on those solar panels, uh, they do work quite well. And just a second ago, there was a sunburst and I saw 380 watts coming in, which is the highest I've recorded. But of course, the panels are very cool today. It's a cool day. And they were really cold by being in this darkness. And then when the sun opened up, shot up to 380 watts. So uh, just a little 
feedback on those panels, they're doing quite well. Oh, and there we go. Nice, nice cloud burst or sunburst. Those panels exceeded their rating just briefly. But again, those are cool panels. Here comes the sun again. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> we all saw it, though, those 400 watt foldable portable solar panels from NERSV. Here's going to be a bright burst of sun, but fast moving conditions. Trade winds are blowing, lots of scattered showers. Here we go. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> saw 412 watts on a 400 watt array. So I give those panels a real high mark on that. As we showed you that the uh, the case and the kickstand uh, have a little work maybe to be done, but you can't complain about this output on the solar panels. Looking really nice. Come on, one more time. Let's break 400. Come on. Nah, clouds, clouds, come on. We're cheering you on. Anyway, we saw it. So those panels under, you know, ideal conditions, cool, uh, bright sun, you know, that wouldn't have lasted if the sun stayed out. It would have dropped below 400, but they work quite well. And filling up the battery bank quite quickly now. Yeah. And so this is what it looks like out there. You can see little bits where the sun does peek through. And then it does this. <laughs> Love that Victron. Look how fast it tracks. I mean, all those little breaks in the clouds. Sun just squeezes through them. Look at that. Saw 416 watts. Very fast moving conditions. But yeah, I gotta love that. Very nice. So anyways, it's just a Saturday in the bungalow guys and, and gals playing around, got power up and running, got what I need running. And I'm getting 407 watts of solar off of a 400 watt array. Pretty sweet. And that's what that looks like. All right. Hope you're having a good weekend, everybody. I'll show you how this develops. Pretty happy. Got power in the bungalow, ha. Huh? Real power. Aloha. Hope you're all doing well. All in all, not a bad day. Solar systems all got up to a nice charge, even under these conditions. And I caught some water to boot, a few hundred gallons. Nice.